This YouTube series will cover material that we cover in our Introduction to Astronomy class from a meteorite found in Antarctica from the planet Mars and the search for life, all the way through to supernovas and black holes. So we formed ourselves a solar system. We've got terrestrial and Jovian planets. We've also got some leftover pieces. In fact, we had a class discussion about what about those leftover pieces? Do they pose a risk to the Earth? A guy by the name of Eugene Shoemaker convinced us by looking at a crater in Arizona, meteor crater in Arizona, that in fact large impactors do strike the Earth. And in fact, if you look at the extinction of the dinosaurs, and perhaps other major extinctions that we've had on Earth, we believe that that has something to do with potential climate alteration caused by large impactors. So, what are we doing to find our way to protect our planet from these potential impactors? Well, the first thing we got to do is find these things. And as we discussed in class, this guy, Eugene Shoemaker, who was doing his work along with his wife, Carolyn, uh, have detected a number of Earth-crossing asteroids. And in fact, during our discussion in class, we talked about in the 90s, we had only found about maybe 10% of the potential impactors that can strike the Earth, based on how many of these asteroids are being perturbed into an Earth-crossing orbit. I'd say today, now in the you know, 2010s, 2016, et cetera, time frame, we're probably closer to 50%. So I'd say now, as we get closer and closer to 2020, we're at about 50% of the objects we've been able to detect and recognize they pose no threat to the Earth. Still, it begs an interesting question. If things have hit the Earth in the past, we better spend some time finding out what's out there. What we might do when we find them might involve things like astronauts setting up rockets to push the asteroid out of its orbit. Uh, it might involve solar sails. It might even involve changing the color of the asteroid to use sun pressure. That's right, light pressure can push an asteroid as well. But the point is uh, that as it stands today, we're in much better shape than we were just 20 or 30 years ago through the work of Eugene Shoemaker and his study of a fantabulous crater just outside of Flagstaff in Arizona. What we want to discuss a little bit now is how we can study these terrestrial and Jovian planets. What we might be able to flesh out by looking at them, yes, from above at the atmosphere, but what we might be able to explore by studying them on the inside. And not necessarily by drilling a hole. In fact, we might be able to find something out about a planet on the inside by looking at how big it is and what it weighs. Of course, what I'm talking about right here is looking at a planet's density. Density is a powerful tool for astronomers. The symbol for density is the Greek letter rho. And of course, when we discuss density, we're talking about how much mass is present in a given amount of space. Mass per unit of volume, that is kilograms per cubic meter. So when we talk about density, we're talking about how many kilograms of material, the mass, are present in a cubic meter of material. And this is a powerful tool for studying what planets like the Earth are made of. If we're going to talk about that, we might discuss briefly what still falls from the sky. What makes up the material that is still accreting to the Earth today to give us a sense for what those objects uh, uh, might have done to the early Earth. I'll tell you what falls out of the sky. Rocks, meteorites, bits of iron, meteorites as well, and bits of comets which are made of water ice. So there is a value of knowing the density of what falls from the sky today. Water, rock, and iron. So it would be nice to know the density of water. Turns out that's about 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. The density of rock, generic everyday rock, which is about 3,000 kilograms per cubic meter. 
And lastly, iron meteorites fall from the sky. The density of iron, which is element Fe, is approximately 8,000 kilograms per cubic meter. This is a powerful tool for studying what planets are made of. Because you can look at the average density of a solid object. For example, the density of the Earth. That's the symbol for density. Earth, the average. The average density of the Earth is approximately 5,500 kilograms per cubic meter. What does that tell us? Well, if the Earth's made of water, rock, and iron, it tells us that 5,500 sits somewhere in between rock and iron. So that tells us that the Earth is probably made of about 50% rock, and 50% iron. An object that is 50% rock and 50% iron will find itself halfway between 3,000 and 8,000 and come up with an average density of 5,500. Very similar to the density of mercury as well. Is that surprising? Yeah, because there's not a lot of iron on the surface of the Earth. That tells us there must be a lot of iron at the center of the Earth, where we can't get at it. That's not a surprise, because the early Earth was molten, and the iron would have differentiated to the center. So in fact, the Earth has an iron core, which is approximately half the size of the Earth itself. That's what 5500 can tell us. Now some of you are probably thinking, well, wait a minute, what about water? The Earth is covered with oceans. They cover 70% of the Earth. But the depth of the oceans are so small, a kilometer or two compared to the greater than 10,000 kilometer diameter of the Earth. So the average density of the Earth really isn't affected much by water. By the same token, I can tell you that the average density of the Moon, the density of the Moon is 3,300. What does that imply? It implies the Moon is mostly rock with a small iron core. As we discuss the formation history of the Moon, this is going to be important. The planet Pluto, another solid body, has a density of approximately 2,000. What's that made of? 2,000? Mm, it's about half rock and half water. Water mostly in the form of ice. And of course, to be fair, when you get out to Pluto, not all ice is water ice. Carbon dioxide ice, ammonia ice, nitrogen ice. There's lots of different ices. The point is, Pluto is about 50-50 rock. And frozen ice. Now you can't use this technique to study the density uh, and the interior structure of the Jovian planets. The planet Saturn has a density of 690. What's that made of? Well, Saturn's made mostly of gas, just like Jupiter. Jupiter's average density is 1300. That doesn't mean that Jupiter is mostly water with a little rock. The density of gas is highly variable as it is highly compressible. Think about it. You could, all the oxygen you need to breathe can be stored in a scuba tank. That's pretty high density air, but less when it's let out. So, this technique doesn't work as well when studying the outer planets, the Jovian planets. I will note, though, that the Earth is the densest planet in the solar system, followed closely by Mercury, and Saturn is the least dense planet in the solar system. It has a density so low it would float, it's less than the density of water. What we'll talk about next is do a little survey of the terrestrial planets, focusing more on the Earth and the Moon, and then talk a little bit about what the Jovian planets look like in particular.